Hi, my name is Josh Oliver with Zenata Consulting. In today's video, I'm gonna go over formula fields in Zoho Creator. By the end of this video, you'll have a more advanced understanding of formula fields and be able to use them confidently in your Zoho Creator projects. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this video useful. Enjoy. So formula fields are one of the more important fields and they have a lot of flexibility inside of Zoho Creator. There's a lot of things you can do with them. And so in this video, I'm going to go through a little bit of some of the basics, but also maybe talk about some of the more advanced implementations you can accomplish with the formula field. To add a formula field, it's just one of the advanced fields within Zoho Creator. So if you go into your form builder, you can pull in a formula field. Now in a formula field, it's going to ask for your expression, and then you have some reference fields you can pull into that expression. Obviously, the, the first thing you might think of with the formula field is just a simple math formula. So maybe you wanted to do some simple arithmetic. Let's say we have estimated hours inside of this form. So right now I'm working on a task module. Let's say we have estimated hours, and we just want to show whatever the estimated hours is minus one. So all I have to do is just do pull in the reference field and estimated hours and then just do minus one. Now all that is is just whatever this value is minus one and that will show up inside of this formula field. So that's the most basic arithmetic you could probably think of. And then let's just say this is hours remaining. Some other cool things you can do with a formula field is you can display this on the form itself. So while you are editing this record, you can display this formula or you could have it hidden, have it used for uh, either a report or some sort of automation on the back end. Let me just show you what this looks like now. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna add a task. You see hours remaining is not populated. Another thing to note, this is a disabled field. So you cannot actually edit this value because it's a formula based on, in this case, estimated hours. So if I put in estimated hours, one, one minus one is zero. It also converts this to a decimal because estimated hours is a decimal type. And so it knows that it's just going to output a decimal for that hours remaining. So that's a first level of an implementation that you can do with a formula field. Some other cool things you can do is you aren't limited to values stored within this record. This hours remaining, I have actually associated to our account module in here. And so we have hours remaining. So maybe uh, this account is purchasing a certain retainer of hours. Let's say we have five hours on retainer and I wanna reference this five hours for this task module. So instead of it showing, I would want the arithmetic to be five hours remaining or whatever the amount is associated to that account minus the estimated hours. And so I would want the hours remaining here to show one. What that would be is a formula field again. And I can come in here and I just pull in from the account instead. So I'd say account dot. Now the account is the module or the object. And then I can pull in a field from that object. And I believe it's just called hours remaining. If it's not correct, it will give me an error message. So one thing I could do is just reference that hours remaining. And now whenever I create a task, it's still blank until I choose an account. But once I choose an account, then you can see hours remaining is whatever that amount is associated to that account. So we have five associated to this account. But let's say I also wanted to reference the estimated hours. So if I put in one here, I want the hours remaining to deprecate to four. Well, I could add arithmetic to this and then just say minus estimated hours. So I could populate either estimated hours here and that's going to, it's still not populated until I have a value associated to the account. And then now you can see the account is, so it would be five from the account minus the estimated hours. And that gets updated anytime you are updating the estimated hours. So you can see there's a lot of cool things we can do to pull in data from a related object. So account being one of these related objects, 
We could also do other math in here, more complicated, maybe using parentheses or just standard. If you're using PEMDAS, parentheses, multiplication, addition, subtraction, and so on. So that's how you can do it in here. You can also do conditional statements. So if status equals something, then this, otherwise this. So if statements, and you can uh, go through the conditional formula builder if you want uh, for an example for that. Whenever you are doing conditionals and you are referencing a string value, it is a double quotes. So make sure you're using just the standard quotes and not the apostrophe. So if status in this case, let's say if status is open, then I can reset this now there and then estimated hours is one, but status is not open yet. So if it's in progress, closed, or open, then now that formula will run. So that's a quick tutorial on that. Now we aren't just limited to displaying numbers inside of formula fields. We can do other cool things such as displaying it as plain text, or we could even do HTML. So one cool thing with this, if you wanted to display it as, let's say we wanted to know a status field from the account. I could pull in any value from the account. So status is one of those values. So we have active or inactive. And let's say we wanted to just show account.status. And this is just a reference value. So in this case, I would probably want to rename this to account status. And then I can come in here, create a task, choose an account, and we can see that that account is active. Of course, there's other things you could do. You could base the conditional statement based on the account status or so on. Another more advanced thing you can do with formula fields is HTML. Let's say within this task, we wanted to create a button. Now, unfortunately, it won't actually show up as HTML on the form itself, but it will show up as HTML on a report. Just for an example, let me show you what that would look like. So let's say we want to build out a button. Uh, so to build a button in HTML, first we have to start it with a quote, and then we're just going to say button. And then we have to give it an a tag, a, and then href equals, and then single quotes. Let's finish this out. So this is essentially what it would look like and then click here. So a button could be, maybe you wanted to edit the account record. And so let's build out that URL. So here's a quick article on editing records via a record ID inside of Zoho Creator. And all we need is just the form link name, the record ID and the report. So I can copy this here and that's gonna be the basis of our URL. So our form, let's go ahead and open up our editor, is the account. Oh, here we go. Form is account. The record link ID is account, but we wanna make sure that this is pulling in from our Form. So this is actually a parameter. So we're going to say input dot account. And then our view link name is our report link name that we want to pull from. So it'd be all accounts. Now I can save this. And here, it, right now it defaults to plain text. And so a plain text wouldn't actually format this. But let me just show you what this looks like. So I'm going to reset. Let's go ahead and create a, another task. And we can see plain text just shows it here. But I have to actually create the task first. So uh, HTML test. So we can see that on a report, it's just showing as text. 
and we don't really care to see it as text. We want to see the actual button. I want to be able to click here and open up that form so I can edit the account from here. And just to make it clearer, let me just say edit account. So that's the button. Watch what happens when I change this to HTML now though. When I change it to HTML, that then becomes an HTML element that I can then click. At the bottom of my screen, you can see that URL being populated. If you see right down here, it is pulling in a record link ID. And if I click here, you can see, there we go. So it did populate it. And now I can go ahead and edit this account just by clicking that button. And then I go ahead and click save. Uh, there is probably additional URL parameters we want to put for next URL. So if I go into my resources here, we have navigational URLs. This is a uh, article that Zoho has posted, so feel free. And I will do a more in-depth uh, review on this. Uh, but one of the URLs could be uh, go back. And a parameter within this would need to be and Z C uh, Z C next URL and script back. I think it's lowercase. Yeah, lowercase. Next, and then URL is just this one. So ZC next URL, and then just go back. Another URL parameter I could put in here is ZC load in dialog. So I want it to go back when I submit, and I want to load this, load this in a dialog box. Now the going back might not actually make sense uh, because if I'm loading it in a dialog, I might want to just close that dialog box, but let's just see what it, it does now. Uh, one thing to note is whenever you edit a formula, you might need to trigger it again. So I just come in here and click update. It looks like I might have broken something, so let's see what I did. Ah, I found it. So it looks like I accidentally lost that little apostrophe, so I'm going to put that back. I'm also just going to get rid of the ZC. Well, let's just show what it looks like now. So. Now when I edit and update, it is back. When I click here, it's gonna load it in a dialog. And whenever I update, in this case, it's going back. I don't want it to actually go back. I want it to come back in here and we'll just say script dialog close all. So inside of my formula, I'm just gonna replace script dialog and go ahead and redo that. Now this is a more advanced feature. I don't expect uh, you to use it like this, but just know that you can build on these HTML elements to do whatever you want. Uh, so in this case, I am creating an HTML element that's referencing a value within a parent object, but it doesn't have to be this fancy. Maybe you just want to build a, a signature. Maybe you, you have an HTML signature that you want to populate based on values inside of this report or it could be really anything. Let your mi mind go wild with these HTML elements if you want it to be HTML. Otherwise, you just use it as a simple formula field that's referencing values within a parent object or within the object that you're looking at. There's a lot of cool things we can do with these formula fields, so let your mind go wild. Definitely put a comment down below in this video if you have a cool use case that you have built out for formula fields and let, let the, the community know what you've done. I hope you found this video useful, and I hope it got you thinking about the possibilities for formula fields inside of your Zoho Creator projects. Now you should have a good idea of how to build these formula fields out yourself. If you have any questions or implementations you'd like to share, please put those in the comments below or head over to our community, Club Zanata. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great rest of your day.